Hello guys, RC Shim behind his car. Why do I have to use this mic? Well, because it's uh, quite windy. <laughs> I feel like one of these weather channel journalists. Uh, but it's not raining, so I, I really want to take you on to the journey of me flying my first... Oh, damn it. Flying my first 6S copter. So that's what this video is about today. Let's take a quick look, a really quick look at my first unboxing and into the hangar to see the copter from close up. Which gel RC? It looks slim. Some props with new sticker. Velcro and instructions. That's a very clean instructions sheet uh, with all the necessary information. It's written in English <laughs> and it has the table here and also pinout diagram and also nice touch uh, free sky bind instructions sheet. It looks like Somebody put some thought into it and tested this stuff and first impressions of the stack not 100% protected by the top plate or by the, by the fuselage because it's very slim. This thing is isolated against vibrations. This flight control board has two sets of gyros, 5mm arms. They look fragile maybe but they are very strong. And there are 20 mil and 30 mil holes for different builds. Down there, there is a capacitor to filter out nasty stuff from your battery. And the motors are 1600 kV. And if you increase the voltage, you need to decrease the kVs. That's why the 6S copters come with lower kV motors than the 4S copters. That also means on 4-cell you will get lower amount of power of course for this 180 or 190 dollars it comes in a in a pre-configured analog setup with the video tx back there and uh, their own cam we will see how good this is it's a 2.1 mil lens okay the nice thing in there should be enough place for the air unit if you look at this yeah it for sure will work one clever thing they did here with the cam mount. This way it's a 19 mm setup for the smaller cams. But if you use those side brackets upside down, which you can with the different holes, you can go a bit, you see, you can go a bit uh, wider. So it's 19 or 22 millimeters. That's a simple but clever idea. So that's the FC up there, the VTX. Below the VTX we have the Free Sky receiver, which I will get out of there now. Well, after some soldering, the Crossfire Nano is down there below the VTX. VTX, power cables. I'm curious to see how many interference from the power we will have. I love the fact that it already comes pre-configured to hold your Immortal T antenna. Okay, so as you've seen, it's quite a nice machinery, but it, let's see what the real difference is. And so my first flight, my maiden flight with this thing will be a 4S. And then I hope I can put some, some big fat smile on my face by swapping over to the 6S battery. So let's check it out with 4S, on 4S. And here is a big foreshadowing event. If I would have just read this bad RX warning from the flight control, I could have saved a lot of time here. You have to keep in mind that it was really, really windy up there. It was my maiden flight, which is not a good combination after all. And apparently I had a bad RX as the flight control stated. And I only realized this later. Also with the gracious help of you guys. So thanks a lot for helping me with my cry for help videos on the weekend, on this weekend. And I'm not sure if this was only the bad RX or also the desync motor issue that I had afterwards. So some issues 
until I finally can fly happy with this copter. This is a comparison Aurora from HDLRC, which comes standard with the Sector 5, versus something like a Runcam Phoenix 2 on the right side. The Phoenix 2 is really a good camera, by the way. Okay guys, this uh, whole flight session was not going as I planned. And the whole point of me installing Crossfire there was not to have fail -safes. Yeah, so this is the culprit. I desoldered it. I used normal force to unplug the UFL antenna and the connector came off. I installed the second one, I had two. It was just the receiver had something. So I'm about to install the Phoenix 2 in my new copter. And why? Because it's I've never seen such a nice image actually. Once again too windy actually, but anyhow tomorrow it will rain, so I take today. So the first flight will be four cells and then swap to six cells. First flight was okay. I still have some weird twitching on the yaw axis if I apply throttle. I use those Tattoo V3 packs, 1300 milliamp, 6 cells. The way I mount my lost model finder is like this and then this. Make sure that your balancer connector doesn't interfere with the props. It's not good normally. And this is the first 6S connection. The camera is rolling. Wish me luck. Right after takeoff, I applied a bit more throttle and it made some weird movements. A lot to learn with this quad. <laughs> I've had a few issues already. The first issue was not the quad's fault with the faulty Crossfire Nano. If I apply uh, let's say more than 50% throttle on those motors, they freak out, so maybe it's a motor desync, I don't know. So to get rid of those or similar motor desync problems, the first thing to do is go into the beta flight setup and see this motor idle throttle value. It was a default of 4.5% and I changed it up to 8 and at least then I could fly, but I still had some stutters. So the next thing I did, and that was what led to success, I took a look at the BL Heli settings with the BL Heli suite and changed the ESC timings, motor timings, and everything that you see here, everything that has gone bold here, I, I adjusted it a bit. And I did this following the wonderful tutorial of Oscar Liang which I will also link you in the info box of this video. So I don't know if 
Everything of this was necessary, but it led to success. It maybe makes my copter a bit less efficient, a bit less powerful, but this way it flies really good and smooth, which you will see in the next scene. Okay, I'm risking my GoPro on a new drone because of that. I want to see how it looks up there. With a nice fat rainbow. Seven percent with six minutes of uh, mixed flying. Okay, before the weather gets too nasty, I mean it looks damn beautiful with morning sun and uh, a freaking rainbow in the background. I was really eager to fly this morning because there's really a lot of bad weather coming, and I wanted to test my Bill Haley tuning settings for the sector 5 to be able to bring this sector 5 review to a to an end and luckily everything worked out so nice today so at the moment this is only my third or fourth pack with a six cell copter and to be totally honest i don't see a lot of difference Maybe this, the flight times increased slightly. I can fly quite uh, aggressive and still fly like five or six minutes. That's something that I couldn't do on forest. So slightly better flight times, more throttle response over the whole battery on those Tattoo V3 on this apparently quite good battery. So. I will also try to test a few different props, but these props now are the gem fan that came with the Sector 5. I also ordered something just for fun from, from Steel or from, from Ethics labeled, which are also gem fans, I guess. With these tweakings that I did, I can, yeah, I can for sure recommend you the Sector 5. It's a good copter. It's a good, ah, my arm. It's a good, beginners 6s quad and it might as well be for the pros i don't know yet because i'm obviously i'm not a pro with 6s not even with 4s but i also found that 
Um, yeah, for testing I do throttle punches and stuff and, and try to fly acrobatic. But I found that it's again most fun is by flying smooth cruise style around. And by that I only saw like 8 amps or so. So it looks damn efficient with those higher volts. So that's something I like. I hope that I can continue my path to 6S. Next plans would be to test as much uh, 6S batteries as I can get from Banggood. Thanks in advance uh, Banggood for sending me 6S batteries. Now you have to. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. Use the bell so you don't miss my uploads. I appreciate you guys commenting a lot. So please hit me up in the comments, ask me questions, just say hi. It makes my day. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.